could be. Okay, um, well, something that wasn't fun that happened to me over the weekend that I wanted to talk about yesterday, but we didn't get to it. Um, and actually, the Side Dish blog, which is Nancy Nichols, um, D Magazine's food critic, her blog, um, she beat me to it. So um, something that happened over the weekend is I decided to go Friday happy hour. So me and Raya Ramsey, who is the um, fashion editor for um, you know the fashion portion of D Magazine, um, we decided to go have cocktails at this new restaurant called Le Bilbo K. Mm -hmm. And if you're familiar, if you've been to the Le Bilbo, it's in, there's one in New York, and they just opened the one in Dallas. So we well, were. Well, here's the thing about that too, because we I went the next day to check uh -huh. it out after uh -huh. you told me about it, and I guess the New York one is sort of shut down for renovations. Yes. So, this, so Dallas is like the only location. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we decided to go there and have um, some glasses of champagne. So we have been sitting there for about two hours, and we're about to order our fourth glass of champagne, which between the two of us, I want to clarify that, everyone, because everyone thinks I'm yeah, an alcoholic Yeah, and over now. several hours. Yes, I mean. over three hours. Um, so we're about to order, between the two of us, our fourth glass, collectively, so four but divided by two people, everyone. Um, <laughs> and the waiter comes and brings our check. And we're like, oh, well, we wanted to get another glass. <gasps> and he goes, well, we have reservations coming in, and we're nervous y'all aren't going to be, y'all are still going to be here, and <gasps> so we need you to leave. <gasps> we have reservations coming in, and so what, everyone's going to rush the doors at 7 p.m., and yeah. they're going to magically fill up all the tables? And mind That's you, awful. we're paying customers. Like, champagne's not cheap. Right. And so he's like, we need y'all to leave. And we're like, well, we look around. Show that, pull that picture up again on, um, on Side Dish. The restaurant is empty. Is this the photo that you took? Did you take this picture? Raya took yeah. it. The restaurant, see this picture? It's, yeah. There's me in the little corner. The restaurant is empty. Mm -hmm. There is one other couple sitting. And this is at 645. We have 7 o'clock reservations. And we're ner he kept going, we, we are nervous that, that y'all are, aren't going to leave in time, that we, we aren't going to be able to clear the tables. And so it raised this question with Ray and I, is this appropriate for a restaurant to do? Is this customary if you have reservations that they're allowed to ask you to leave if you don't have reservations, but you're just having a drink? Well, in an empty restaurant, I think that's the key is that, you know, if it's 645 and people have seven o'clock reservations, they must have reservations for every single one of those tables. And that's I fine. Know. But as people start coming but in. But they don't have reservations for every single one of those tables. Well, it's their first week or it was their second week of being open. And so I guess they were wanting to, you know, I mean, they had well, a, they a full been... packed Friday night. I don't know. But the point that I'm trying to make, and regardless of if it's Raya or if it's me or if it's whoever that's there eating, and a lot of people said, well, how could they kick you out knowing who you and Raya were? for D and of course you're gonna put them on blast but it's not that's not the point the point is if it's an empty restaurant and you're willing to pay for two more glasses of champagne yeah. like is that the do they have a minimum that you have to spend I no mean, they didn't tell no. us that when we sat no. down at five but I think what I would have loved is someone just to go hey we do have reservations that start at seven so we can move you on to the patio and we were in a corner table like minding our business and all these people on side dish are making comments so Courtney must have been drunk and obnoxious that wasn't the case. <laughs> that so they is, asked you to leave. That is nah. really bad. I've I, never heard of anybody ever doing that. So Nancy Nichols, she posted it yesterday and kind of started, there's a lot of comments if you go to it on Side Dish Kitchen. But interestingly enough, I got an email from the owner of Le Bill Vauquet last night. I was going, going night. to say, yes. And I just want to thank him for the email. I'm going to read it real quick. He just says, I'm the owner. I wasn't here when you came in. It's my understanding that you did not get that type of hospitality you received. I'm sincerely sorry, and I hope that you will give me the chance to show you lay Bill Bouquet on under better circumstances. And yeah. he actually um, is the director of operations, at, was the director of operations at St. Anne, and I filmed there for Courtney Loves Dallas, so I actually know this man. But thank you for reaching out to me, and um, I would like to come back under different circumstances. And let me just say, too, on the on the plus side of um, Le Bil Bil Bouquet. You had brunch there the next we day. We did. We went for um, Father's Day brunch, and it was fantastic. And the service was wonderful, and the food was fantastic. And I think probably what happened is you had an overly jealous, eager zealous waiter that I'm sure has probably been yeah. spoken to about yeah. that. So that's label, just not okay, the way I will it, come so. back, but I just had to Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here. What? If he wrote you that email last night mm -hmm. and apologized, why did you think it was necessary to tell the whole story of how you were treated today? 
Well, I just wanted to follow up on the side dish blog that they posted. But, well, and I think that shows really great customer service, actually, that the owner heard about it. He's watching, he's listening to what people are saying, and he's reaching out and saying, you know, I'm really sorry, that, that really should never have happened. Please come back, let us show you, you know, what your experience should have been like. I right? should have told the story yesterday, to your point. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> well, because... So I screwed he, up. No, it's, I'm just asking. I'm just asking the question because he's apologetic. No, and so I said I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. So I do appreciate it, and I'll come eat there. Yeah, and I 